In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a VLOOKUP. In this worksheet called Store Sales, I have a list of store numbers and their sales for the year 2009. In the worksheet next to it called Store Information, I have all of the store names, address details and the sales representatives for each of the stores. Let's say I want to merge some of this information into the first store sales worksheet so that I can see the store name, suburb and sales representative for the store next to the store 2009 sales figures. Let's come across to the store sales worksheet and in cell C1 here I'm going to call this column suburb. In cell D1 I will add store name and in cell E1 I will add sales rep. I'm going to start by adding the VLOOKUP formula here in cell C2. What I want to do is ask Excel to find this store number listed in the second worksheet and then return the suburb for that store number. So let's go to the Formulas tab on the Microsoft ribbon and click on Insert Function. Now in Search for a Function, type VLOOKUP and click on Go. VLOOKUP should then appear at the top of the list down here, so make sure it is highlighted and then click OK. There's four fields here that need to be completed, and down the bottom is a description or explanation of what that field should include. So in this case it says lookup value is the value to be found in the first column of the table, etc, etc. You'll notice that if I click in the other fields, that explanation down the bottom changes. If you find the explanation confusing, you can also go to the help function here and it will take you directly to the help topic on the VLOOKUP function. I'm just going to close that help function. So there are four fields and the ones that are in bold are compulsory fields that are required in order for the formula to work. The bottom field called range lookup is not compulsory, however I always complete that field. So let's start with the first field being lookup value. In this field, we are telling Excel which value, or in our case, store number, that we want Excel to find in the second worksheet. So I'm just going to click on cell A2. So we are telling Excel that we want it to find store number 96963. Let's click in the table array field. Now this is where we specify where it is that we want Excel to go looking for that store number. So we've told Excel to look for store 96963, but so far we haven't told it where to look. So I'm going to click on the second worksheet, the store information worksheet, and I'm going to highlight the reference table from cell A2 through to cell F41. I'm also going to press the F4 key on my keyboard to make it an absolute reference because I want to copy this formula later on and I want the cell references to be the same regardless of where I copy the formula to. Before I click in the third field, the column index number, let's just have a look at the reference table. In the column index number field, we have to specify which value we want returned, but we do it by specifying the column number. So in this case, we want the suburb to be the value that is returned, and if we look at our reference table, the suburb is four columns along. So let's click in the column index number field, and you'll notice that the moment we click in that field, Excel returns to the first worksheet where we are inputting our formula. That's why I asked you to hold off on clicking into that field so that we could count the columns in our reference table first. So remember now that the suburb was the fourth column along, so let's put the number four in this column index number field. Now as I mentioned earlier, the range lookup field is optional. The range lookup allows you to specify to Excel that you want Excel to find an exact match and if it can't find an exact match then it should return an error message instead. So if I put the word false in this field here, I'm saying to Excel find the store number 96963 and only that store number. If on the other hand I was to leave that field blank, Excel would then try and find store number 96963 and if it couldn't find that number it would return what it believes is the closest match to that number. But we don't want that because it will give us the store suburb and details of a totally different store. Whenever I use VLOOKUP I always put false in this field to ensure that Excel is looking for an exact match. 
you'll notice that it gives you a preview of what the formula result is here. So if you get a hash NA or something similar, then it may be that you've done something wrong in your formula, or it may just be that the value doesn't exist in your reference table. Let's click OK and you'll see that the suburb has now appeared. Let's click in the formula bar and see how that formula has been crafted. So it is saying look up the value in cell A2. There is our reference table. There is our column index number. So we were saying give us column 4 which was the suburb. And the word false there represents the instruction to Excel to look for an exact match. Now I can copy that formula down to the rows underneath it and the formula will still work because I have a relative reference for the lookup value. So in other words, there are no dollar signs where it says A2 and we have an absolute reference for the table array or reference table, which you can see here is noted by the dollar signs around A2 to F41. So let me copy the formula down by moving my cursor to the bottom right hand corner of the cell until a black cross appears and then double clicking. And you can see now that all the suburbs have appeared. But look here at cell C13, it's come back with an error. Why hasn't it found that store number? Well it could be that that store number just doesn't appear in our reference table, but in this case it's actually because there is a space between the first two digits of the number and the last three digits, whereas the value that appears in our reference table has no spaces. If I remove that space, the suburb then appears. So in order for VLOOKUPs to work, you need to have clean data. You might find that you need to spend a little bit of time cleaning your data beforehand, particularly if the reference table and the lookup value are from two different sources. Okay, so let's now look at copying this formula across to the remaining columns so that I can see the store name and the sales rep. If I copy that formula across, let's just see what happens. It gives me an error and that's because if you look in the formula bar here at my original formula, the lookup value, which is the first value here, A2, is a relative reference, which means the cell reference will move along one column each time I copy the formula across. So it says A2 here, but in the next cell along it says B2, so it's now trying to find this sales value here rather than the store number. So let me change the original formula and make it a mixed reference by positioning my cursor at the end of A2 and hitting the F4 key three times so that a dollar sign appears to the left of A, telling Excel to always refer to column A. If I now copy that across, it should give me the suburb again. What I now need to do is change the column index number because at the moment it says 4, which you remember is the suburb column. Let's come across to the second worksheet and see what column number it should be for store name. So the store name is here, which is column 2. Let's go back to our formula in the first worksheet and change it. Come into the formula bar here and we want to change the column index from 4 to 2 and then hit enter. And it's now giving me the store name. So let's copy that formula down to the rows underneath. Let's copy that formula across to the last column for sales rep. And again, let's go across to the store information worksheet and see what column number we should have in our formula for the sales representative name. So it's column one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go back and edit the formula. So this time I'm going to change the column index number in our formula from two to six. If I copy that formula down, the rest of the cells are populated with the correct information. Now there's just one more thing to be careful of when you're doing VLOOKUPs and that is in the selection that you make for your table array or reference table, the value that you tell Excel to look up needs to be located in the first column of your reference table. So if I come across here to the store information worksheet, you'll remember our reference table was from cell A2 through to F41 and we were asking Excel to find a particular store number. In this case it worked because the store numbers were appearing here in the first column of our range. If the store numbers were appearing in column B and we still had our reference table listed as cells A2 to F41, the VLOOKUP would not have worked. So the column containing the value that you were looking for has to be the first column in your table array and the value that you want returned has to be in one of the columns to the right of that but still within the range that you specify. Well that ends the VLOOKUP tutorial, I hope you found that useful and I wish you the best with it.